How do you lay down, Z? Hit level, bro. Is that a Most question or a statement? Most goaded in this game. What's going on everybody it's chi eddie and today we're going to be talking about arena breakout infinite a title that i've recently had the lucky opportunity to sink about 10 hours into up until this point i work a full job and i got a family so if i could play more absolutely i would be playing more right now uh, this game is doing a lot that i think should have been done in previous titles who shall not be named in this video and I think that they're really capitalizing on the market at this moment in time. Like there's just a lot of homeless gamers in this, in this community at this moment. So we're gonna talk about what this game does well and what it doesn't do well and things that I think could be coming to it. I'm not entirely positive and I don't really like to speculate on stuff unless I know for certain what is on the horizon and what's coming. So let's start with the good, what this game does extremely well. It, for one, it has one of the cleanest UIs that I've seen in an early access title in a long time, maybe even ever, if we're being honest. Everything is super easy to read. There's nothing confusing about where you need to go or what you need to do. And I didn't find myself confused that often for how to set up a gun or how to get to a trader or even how to start matchmaking with my friends and matchmaking i mean while we're on the topic this is some of the shortest matchmaking times i've had in this genre in the tactical looter shooter i mean it's crazy we're finding games in seconds and given the fact that this is a limited play test with a limited community i just think that's super impressive and it's only going to continue to get better the current PID system that's in the game is something very similar and reminiscent of PUBG. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I know there have been people that have said, well, it's it's breaking my immersion. I can't get into this tactical looter shooter when my friend has a green circle above his head. And to be honest, I don't share the same sentiment with them. There needs to be a middle ground at some point in this genre, and it needs to be a little bit easier for folks to play with their friends and make sure they're not shooting their friends as somebody that's coming from having over 100 hours in gzw up until this point i can tell you that i would take this all day over spamming my m key trying to confirm if i'm about to shoot my friend in the face or not and i know you can't kill your friends so like maybe that system's not necessarily all that important but i still appreciate it and i'm sure there's a lot of casual gamers or people that are looking for an opportunity to get into a looter extraction shooter or a looter shooter, whatever we're calling this now, that wanna get into this genre of game without having to watch you know, hours of content to really get their feet wet and feel comfortable going into some of their first raids. And that brings me to my next point is there's really not a learning curve on this game at all. Sure, you might not understand the ammos right off the rip, but the game literally tells you the penetration power and the damage that each round is gonna do. So anybody that can look at numbers and say, big number good, uh, you're gonna have a, <laughs> an awesome time. You're not gonna have any troubles really figuring out the ammo and ballistic system in the game. Some other games have previously overcomplicated some of this stuff and made it to a point to where I don't, you know, like, it, fuck it we'll just say the name tarkov i would have to go to a wiki to look at ballistics charts when i first started playing to figure out okay well this one's bad god for fucking bid i ever use anything 9 by 18 and fuck me they're all just shit ammos anyway but this game doesn't have that it tells you right off the rip in the game in the menu you pull up the details and it tells you what that round is going to do the map and questing system in this game is just another thing that it's really knocking out of the ballpark in my opinion. I don't think this game is for people that want to experience pain and misery and suffering and are masochists like most of us Tarkov players are because the game literally tells you where to go and what to do. If you have a task, you pull it up while you're in raid and it will literally tell you exactly where you need to go for the task. There's no more 
reading and trying to decipher from a bunch of vague statements from these traders and looking around for hours for something that's, you know, maybe it doesn't even spawn in the room that it says it does. Cough, cough, Tarkov. I can't tell you how many times I spent valuable raid time looking for an object that has a percentage spawn chance in the room that's even listed on the description for the quest in Tarkov. But this game is just, it says, you need to do A and you need to go to B and it does it perfectly. And I think that really caters to the audience that they're trying to reach, which is again, people that are looking to get into looter shooters and extraction shooters without having to go through the steep learning curve. Maybe people that were put off by the amount of research that they might've had to do before jumping into something like shoreline or jumping into something like woods. The game just does it all for them. They get a map, they get quest icons, it tells them where to go. And personally, I see that as a good thing. The overall quality of life features that are in this game are really not like anything that I've ever seen before in this genre. We get a ability to roll up backpacks and rigs to one by two slots. I exfilled from like one of my first 10 raids in this game with like four or five backpacks on me. And for some reason that was like crazy cool to me. I don't know if it's gonna be as cool to you guys and gals, but for me, it was impressive. Like they figured out a way to do that and make it functional and make sense. Cause I always thought it was kind of silly having a stack backpacks. That full size backpack is still full size when I put it inside, it just never made sense to me. And I think that and the fact that like, if my buddy, pulls my gear from my dead body and hauls that shit across the map to his exfil and he makes it out, I get a little message in the mail. And you know what's in that message? Instantly, the second he makes it out of raid, it's my gear. I get my gear back. Like how fucking cool is that? I didn't have to pay any insurance. My buddy is the insurance. I'm gonna send my boys to customs to look for your shit. You don't have to. You know why? Because my boys are already out there doing it. They're doing the Lord's work. They're bringing my shit back and that's cool. We don't need insurance. The game completely negated it and they don't have to bring that shit into the next raid for me. I just get it back. The system's already there, but everything's not perfect, right? There's bad stuff. There's always good and bad pros and cons. So, I mean, let's get into some of the things that this game doesn't do well. At the top of my list for things that really need improvement before this gets released to the general public is sound design. There's definitely something off about it and I can't quite put my finger on what that thing is. Sometimes sounds sound muffled. Sometimes I think I'm hearing things in a certain area and generally I'm pretty correct, but the verticality like the vertical sound design I'm having issues with and some, it just sounds off, like something doesn't sound right. And there's really no way to describe what I'm feeling and hearing in Raid that uh, I can put into words. I can't articulate it properly. What I can tell you is that after 10 hours, I can still tell where most things are, but there are definitely times where there's a gray area maybe something is in this general vicinity but i can't tell if it's up or down i know for sure i'm hearing it and then there's other times where i'm hearing ghost footsteps i've definitely called out to my teammates at this point they might think i'm just batshit crazy that there's definitely somebody in front of me behind this wall and then we'll swing the corner and there just won't be anybody there that's been kind of confusing uh the quest progression in my opinion flip-flopping you between the maps is I, I would call it a little bit of an annoyance. Like you get this new shiny, you go to Valley, and then shortly after you've explored Valley, you really haven't seen all of it yet. It wants you to go back to the farm. And after taking a deeper look at the way that they set up their maps and matchmaking systems, I know that there's harder versions of farm and Valley. I know that there are gear locked uh, behind a dollar value of the kit that you're wearing versions of Valley and Farm. So maybe this isn't really that big of a deal. It's just something that I noted at the time of writing everything out and my thoughts and feelings about the game. 
right now the ai voice lines that are in the game aren't i wouldn't call them bad but i wouldn't call them good uh they de they definitely need some life given to them because i feel like i'm watching a 1980s western porn when we're <laughs> when we're playing the game sometimes it's just they're really cheesy and uh i don't know maybe that even makes it better like maybe that gives it more life than than i originally thought uh, another thing being the loot pools, I feel like those could probably use uh, a little bit of a buff or a boost because a lot of times I'm searching through cabinets and containers and even in the high value areas, we'll search everything. And I know there's a tiered system for the loot. We just won't be finding a lot of that high value loot. It just won't be there even in the red circled areas which i'm assuming means there's high value shit there so we'll go in there we'll clap everybody up and we'll search around and there just won't be that much which brings me to my final bad something that definitely needs improvement and i don't know if this is by design i know that they need to monetize the game somehow but right now it's really hard to make money like it's not easy I've been playing now for uh, a few days and I would say I'm probably neutral. Like I, I, I'm not net positive, I'm not net negative. I'm probably neutral. And maybe some of that is learning curve and like I don't understand which items to grab. But overall, like 90% of the common items are just shit. They're just not worth your time. And the keys, nine times out of 10 from what we're finding in our playing, is the keys really aren't worth it you'll find a key that's worth two hundred thousand on the flea market and you're like there must be good shit back there right surely there's good shit back there but then when you go behind the locked door you find a couple of capacitors and you know crappers butt plug and it's all worth about four thousand cone or i think i'm saying that right cone cone either way the loop pools definitely need to be buffed uh, we've only spent limited time in the forbidden zones. I think that's what they're called. I'll have to go back and look, but I know there's different tiered versions and maybe the loot's juicier there, but as of right now, it's just not doing it for me. And finally, let's talk about things that I think are probably coming to the game because they have their own separate tabs in the game. Um, and some of the items or monetization techniques have kind of already been revealed to us in the way they gave us our safe containers so i know talking to some folks that played the mobile version of this game that one of the ways they monetized was through safe containers being a monthly charge and i'm fine with that this game plays incredibly for a free-to-play game i'm getting you know insanely good frames there was a couple of times where I dipped above 200 and I'm running 1440, everything cranked up as high as I can get it. We're going for quality here, not performance. I'm sure if I tweak some settings, everything would probably get me even better frames. Um, so from what I understand, the safe containers you are paying for monthly, or at least that's what I think is coming because that was the way that they monetized the mobile system or a monthly charge or a subscription fee so if you pay you know x amount of dollars per month you're going to get a safe container for that month do i have an issue with that no not really they have to find a way to monetize this game somehow and it's honestly a really good game another thing that we noticed through surfing through the menu especially in the missions tab was that there's specific missions for factions in there. So there's probably a faction system on the horizon, which I think is awesome. I think it's really cool. So I guess that leaves the overarching question and the point of this whole video, would I recommend this game to somebody that enjoys extraction shooters? And the answer to that is absolutely. This game is insane. I It's got its hooks in me. I'm probably gonna put in 40 fucking hours between this weekend and the next one if i can uh i know the play test goes on for 10 more days at the time of recording this so i'm really looking forward to pumping out more content and putting in more time in this game it's got its hooks in me like tarkov did when i first started playing it 
and I'm only excited to continue to learn and grow and learn things about the game. Overall, just experience it. Arena Breakout Infinite is one of those titles that I think is going to be around for a while, and I think it's gonna make a big splash in this market. Anyway, boys and gals, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.